I love, I feel the presence of God so strong whenever you share about Jesus and the father. And it's, it's so powerful. Uh, Kim wants to know what clothes do we wear in heaven? Do we wear robes or do we wear clothes like we do here? You have a wardrobe, a place It's probably like a, maybe a thousand square feet or bigger, your wardrobe room in your mansion. Wow. That's every type of clothing you would want to wear for anything you do in heaven. And I know it's your spiritual body, but you're in a spiritual world. So that means you'll touch the ground, you'll swim in the water, you'll eat the food. And Come on, let's raise up our heavenly language right now. A ministry with with motorcycles and i saw him in heaven riding on this awesome motorcycle flames were coming out the back of them like a flames of light and fire and but then i actually i didn't actually ride on the trails but i saw these trails victory 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 in the quarters of heaven in the quarters of heaven victory 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 for angels are being released right now angels are being dispatched right now Amanta, ata, ata, rata, dede, baka, santa, ata, ambo, osa, tata, rite, eke, banda, ata, rite. my father was murdered june 26 in 1974 my mother had committed suicide a couple years earlier. Me and my brother was on the verge of being put in a foster home because nobody wanted us. I was five years old and my brother was three. And my auntie, thank God, decided to take the burden on at that point because she didn't want to see us separated like that and have to go through that. And she lived in the state of Ohio. And she had a brother, which was my dad's brother. He was the one that always thought he was better than everybody else in the family, but he had a lot of money because he had a very successful career. And came and picked us up a few weeks after this incident of my father's death. And I'm on an airplane, never been on a plane. Remember looking down and seeing everything looking small and wonder what's going on. And I end up in the middle of the night, me and my brother in a kitchen come into this house and we go into the kitchen and there's other family members there and they're all looking at me and my brother and staring at us and and just had this look i remember that and i remember my aunt saying something to the effect of i'm sorry what's happened to your parents and and, and, and i and i loved your dad and we were close and things and she she had just went through a divorce and had to leave Alabama prior to many years back prior to because she was being abused and 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 the Ku Klux Klan was still wreaking havoc there uh, in the area. And she came back and, and she wasn't in a position. She didn't know how to drive. She was in her 30s or anything. And she had to drop out of school in the fifth or sixth grade to take care of her mother that uh, and grandmother parents uh somebody had cancer uh, uh, her mother and another family member uh it just you know how it was back in the day taking care of family members and and she just didn't have anything and she took me and my brother on but one thing she said in that kitchen that i never ever have forgotten and it hides deep within my heart she said you know, I, I, I can't replace your mother and your father, but I'm going to do the best that I can with both of you. And I never forgot that. Now, though I didn't know what that meant at the time, but she did make every effort. She wasn't a Christian woman or anything, but she made an effort to make a difference to in my life. She made an effort to make sure there was the proper mentors and proper people in my life. She made sure that she lived a life as an example for me to see when others, when my uncle was, he, uh, uh, he was uh, with the Lord and then backslidden and got kind of carried away and was out drinking, hanging in the bars, acting crazy. And she would always say to me when I was little, at that time, she'll say, Maurice, 
You'll never see me drunk and acting a fool like that. And that's the little things that she taught me that I hold close, that I carried over to my kids. And the point of this message is that right now, no longer, we have, we, we have many Christians that are no longer good examples to their family. They're no, good, no more good examples to their friends. And they're no more good examples to society. To society. Because what is crazy is, as you saw in the beginning of that clip, them clips in this video, these are folks that profess to be Christian. They somehow have gotten the limelight. As I told you, the devil has elevated these types of people that's different branches of perverted versions of Christianity and put it in the limelight in some kind of way. And this is what people see. And I'm sure some of them have kids. I'm sure some of them has family members. I've had emails over the years since I started this channel four years ago of people writing me and telling me how their family members are just uh, caused because of their uh, uh, self-righteousness and all of their craziness has caused so much damage and destroyed relationships within the family. And see, and that's the big problem. I, I mean, it, it is, it hurts my heart to see people, the Christians, the people that call themselves Christians, people that call themselves believers, do damage to others. I, it bothers me so much because it's more than ever right now. You know, we talk about the nationalism. I got plenty of more videos coming with that because these that group of people is doing it more than ever as well. But this video, I'm just, you know, this message is about those that are out here that's damaging. They're destroying their kids and everybody around them. You know, I, I give you another story that's going on right now to somebody I've known since 1989, 1990. Someone I know. He found out here recently he's got pancreatic and liver cancer. He's dying. And he wasn't always with the Lord. He came on board. Uh, uh, he, he said he was a believer um, a few years after I became a believer. And he ends up marrying this apostolic, extreme religious girl that is very self-righteous. And they became married. Now, here's the thing. He had a couple kids when I first knew him by a, a girlfriend that it didn't work out. But once he he got with this new wife of his and he had so much turmoil with his ex-girlfriend and she would do little things to aggravate him and, and he would be highly upset. She met, knew exactly when all his raises came and everything and she would go down to the child support agency and make sure she get a raise, do this, that, and this, and, and he would just become more and more and more upset. Now, he got, he said he gave his life to the Lord, goes on and marry this highly self-righteous girl, and then he becomes self-righteous in such a way to where now, because he's so angry at his ex-girlfriend that he no longer doesn't even care uh, cared about his kids. So they grew up. They were little at that time when I first knew him. They were probably five or six, somewhere in there, adolescents and they grew up without their dad he didn't want anything to do with any of them and my oldest son was friends uh with his son and he sat there and uh uh when i would like he would tell me the the uh my son would tell me how he would talk about i wish my dad would take me places i wish my dad would do this i wish my dad would do that long story short the young man ends up becoming a teenage alcoholic using drugs. And last year, he, he died OD. He never recovered from that. And one of the conversations my son said that they had was he was saying like, you know, my dad has done me wrong. All of the stuff that he's done to me and why did he want to be bothered with me and my sister and this and that. I think I have peace. I think I have peace with this. And, you know, I, apparently he didn't have peace because he didn't stop the drugs and alcohol. He tried, though. He was going to rehab. He was trying all of that. 
But his father sat there and did his own kids like that. And now he's on his deathbed. He's the same age as me in the 50s. He's the same age as me. He's in his 50s and his self-righteousness has reared his head again this past week because his sister wanted, bought, bought his father over to the house to visit him bought his other and, and, and his other and his sister and his mother came over there to visit and he didn't really want them there and told them that if you come visit me you got to go through my wife and why the wife was there the self-righteous wife was there she turned this gospel gospel music up loud and was just being she's a holy roller is what we call them she is so self-righteous over the years i've been during the holidays, over the years, I was they over there, over his sister's house, uh, and you know, for the family briefly, and and he will come, maybe come in sometime. Hey, Merry Christmas! Hey, Happy Thanksgiving! Or whatever, whatever. And his wife was set in the car, didn't want to be bothered with his family because his mother was poor and 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 lived in the projects and. And, and like like he uh, and didn't want to be bothered with his side of the family at all. And he cut himself off from his mother, father, and everybody, sisters, nieces, all of them. And now he's on his deathbed and professing to be a Christian all of these years. And this is the example that he has shown. This is the example that his wife has shown. And they've got two daughters. And this is the example. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why the church is in so much trouble because we're getting hit from all angles. Some of it is self-inflicted. Some of it is the devil has raised up and masqueraded, uh, uh, using people to masquerade as angels of light. And you think that they're a so-called prophet or, or a YouTube teacher or a pastor or whatever you want to call them. But he is coming from all angles. And how... I would not want to be in the, his shoes laying on my deathbed and still conducting myself like that. Oh, I, I you know, I, we don't know if someone is really truly saved or not and things like that. Only Jesus know, but we just know we got scripture to give us some, uh, to let us know about evidence of a believer. And he hasn't shown any to me from all of this professing times and she hasn't shown any as well. And this is what's going on and why I wanted to share that with you guys today. The church is many people, you don't wanna be bothered no more. Just because, just like this, people like this, the examples I told you, uh, 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 these two, and there's many more, and I'm sure many of you got examples as well. But one good example, I'm thankful, that, you know, sometimes, you know, as I, I said in many other videos uh, uh, at times, the, that the world, in many cases, treats you better than the church. And, and that's a shame that you can get treated better by somebody that don't even know the Lord. Than, and, and that they will do better than folks that call themselves believers. These believers right now are so self-righteous more than ever doing more damage and destroying souls more than ever. But I'm thankful that my auntie, that raised me, she's winding down now. She, she, she's having some issues and she's, she'll be 90 in September. And I know that she has less time here than, than so. But she instilled in me just a, a lot of things that, I, that I, I'm thankful for, that I didn't realize it. Even though she was overprotective a little bit, uh, well, she was overprotective when I was growing up there because of all the tragedy that happened in our family. And I can understand that now as an adult, she was just being protective. She wanted to guard us and guide us and things like that. And being that example that she made sure that I could try to be, you know, even though I got off track for a little bit, and many of you that follow me a long time, some of you know some parts of my testimony that I've shared that I got off track in various areas. But that that integrity and respect, one thing I've never done, and I, and there's part of me, I've never been disrespectful to people. I don't care what they, how they believe or how they look or how they conduct. I'm not a dis, disrespect 
is not in my in my uh, uh, personality in my core, and unfortunately, that's what we have even more within the body of Christ. Too many Christians that are doing uh, disrespectful, doing damage, messing people's lives up, and being a poor example. You know, Jesus is grieved with this. I know that the Father is grieved with our actions as the body of Christ. And people think that he's just smiling as they go along and do evil deeds towards others. Well, you know, on this channel, what we do, we talk about those issues that the church run away from. Take the devil head on, punch him right in between the chops. Evangelist of God is a channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.